everyone and welcome to Autism Hope Library. I have a treat for you today. I am just so excited about our next guest. Brian Kornblatt is a PhD and he is the medical director of the Nutramax Laboratories. And today we're going to be talking about, you know, that supplement we're all hearing about, that broccoli sprout, you know, I'm going to try to say this word and I'm going to have to say it twice in this interview, uh, sephoraphane, right? So we're going to talk about that and we're going to learn about what benefits for our kiddos can this supplement help. I'm really, really excited. So welcome, Brian. Thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure to be here and I can't wait together to deliver some hope for everybody who watches this. Now, did I say that word right? Perfect. You got it right. Okay, uh -huh. great. So yeah, I know there's a lot of parents out there going, what did she say? But we're going to get into that. But before we do, um, what is your background? Sure, absolutely. So my journey into all this actually starts in 1990. Um, sadly, I lost a really close friend of the family, Andy, to a rare form of cancer. I was just a junior in high school. And um, that summer, I started working with his physicians um, at the University of Maryland's uh, School of Medicine in the cancer department, um, at oncology department, actually working on my first clinical trial. And that was for overriding um, drug resistance and leukemia. So I got really interested in medicine, really interested in wanting to treat cancer and being a pediatric oncologist or cancer specialist. Um, so I, I wasn't your typical kid during the rest of my uh, junior year and then um, senior year in high school, I spent my free time at the cancer labs. And, um, and I did that throughout college as well. And then when I wound up um, applying for medical school, I was blessed. I got into Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. I was a local kid. I grew up in Baltimore. And again, wanted to pursue a, a career in oncology. My first diagnosis I ever made was my own father in 1996. I was a second year medical student with um, diagnosed with metastatic colorectal cancer. And the amazing thing there, just like with Andy, I didn't share, Andy didn't have any family history. So we really think it was environmental. Where he grew up was there was a lot of chromium mines back during World War I and there were electrical lines over his house. So the doctors always kind of thought that there were some environmental causes to his cancer. My dad gets colorectal cancer in 96. Again, no real family history. We thought it was environmental. Um, we ate a lot of red meat back then. There used to be those commercial steak, it's what's for dinner. And, you know, here's my, my brother and my, um, you know, I, I, baseball and soccer coaches. And we would go out a lot for fast food and have a lot of burgers. And they actually, uh, right in 1996, the Cleveland Clinic had had a conference a month prior to him getting diagnosed that his doctor had gone to where they showed the more charred red meat you eat, the greater your chance of breast, prostate, and colon cancer. So they thought, again, it was this environmental link to something he was eating and this charred meat. So that got me into this, like, thinking, boy, why do we wait for people to get diseases, especially things like cancer? Can we prevent them? So, you know, I was at Hopkins and I went all around all the like thousands of labs there. Only three were doing any kind of prevention or proactive health research. Um, it was Dr. Paul Talley, Dr. Tom Kenzer, and Dr. Jed Fahey. And all three were working on the word you got right, sulforaphane, this wonderful phytonutrient from broccoli. So I got really interested. I first um, truly started working on it around 1998, so more than two decades ago. And um, I was blessed to be part of an amazing team where we did some of the first in human clinical studies. We focused on breast health promotion and, um, and other things. But that's really how I got into this whole kind of line of research with sulforaphane. And um, I'll share, while we did these trials at Johns Hopkins, we never were able to make a product that we could commercialize. Um, you know, we would make it for the trials, but then Hopkins isn't a GMP facility. So as luck would have it, I got a call years later from Dr. Bob Henderson from Nutramax, and he was interested in something we had published and wondered if we wanted to create a commercialized product to help deliver sulforaphane or the um, capabilities to produce sulforaphane. That's how I um, came to be at Nutramax in 2010 when we launched the Abmacol product line in, in 2012 officially. Now let's talk about Abmacol. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. So um, it was the first true uh, sulforaphane producing support product. And the reason I say that is, um, let's first start by saying I mentioned that it comes from broccoli and cruciferous vegetables. Um, the precursor glucoraphanin is, is found in broccoli as well as an enzyme myrosinase. And these are in all the cruciferous class of vegetables, um, whether it's bok choy, kale, cauliflower, or broccoli. And when we chew it inside of our GI tract, the reaction occurs and we produce this wonderful phytonutrient sulforaphane. So in 2012, when we launched this, it was the first product that had both the glucoraphanin and that enzyme myrosinase 
phosphatase needed to turn this glucoraphanin into that phytonutrient sulforaphane. It was also the very first, and I think it might still remain the only product that's a, a tablet. We would love to make a capsule. It's much easier to do so, but capsules inherently have three to 5% water weight. And that water can actually go and cripple and, and cause kind of a degradation and, and make the glucoraphanin unstable. So you can make a capsule and most of our competitors have that. But by the time it's on a shelf, you're, you're probably 25 to 50% less of the active is actually in there, that glucoraphanin precursor. So um, stability wise, it's not so good. So ours is the, the only tablet. And the other final thing is we're in over 15 now human clinical studies. And we can talk about that in a little while, um, both here in the US and in Asia, um, supporting our, our Abmacol product. Now, you see, we're, I love this world, this word, saporaphane, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I know a lot of people watching are like, what is that? You know, um, I know many of us in the autism community have seen that word, but we just don't really know what it is. So can you kind of go into detail of what that word means and what it is? Yeah, so sulforaphane is actually called an isothiocyanate. The good news is nobody watching this is going to be tested after this <laughs> interview, but um, it's called an isothiocyanate. And why I and you might ask, why would I be studying this for two decades of my life? It does three major things at the cellular level to help promote health and wellness. And the first most important thing, and you guys all know a little bit about detoxification and these. We mentioned environmental toxins that you know likely had an impact on my friend Andy and my own father. Um, these toxins actually need to be metabolized and rid of at the cellular level. And what sulforaphane does is it up regulates the production of over 200 enzymes that are antioxidative and metabolic enzymes that help to break down everything from these oxidative stresses that we make just when we breathe, but also take all these environmental toxins that we breathe in that are in our water, in our foods, in our products that we wear or at home and at work, and it helps to metabolize and remove them from our body. So it's a really important class of enzymes at the cellular level. And again, so forfane, once it's made in our body, goes into our cells and upregulates these protective enzymes. It also upregulates another class of enzymes called the heat shock proteins. They protect us um, our enzymes are these proteins that are folded in these exquisite three-dimensional shapes, almost like you can imagine a necklace. It gets folded into a three-dimensional shape, but when we are stressed at the cellular level or we have a fever and there's high temperatures, they start to unwind, like your necklace will start to unwind. And that causes these proteins not to work as well. These heat shock proteins protect other proteins, allow them to still function in times of stress. So these are another important class of enzymes. And sulforaphane has been shown to upregulate those. And then the third and, and, and final pathway, and there's others too, but the one I want to discuss today is the inflammatory pathway. So we know so forfane helps to team general inflammation. And everybody I'm sure on this video has heard, you know, about inflammation and how chronic unabated inflammation can be, can be really bad for our cellular health, for organs of our body, for our overall health. And so forfane is able to tame chronic inflammation. So three wonderful things, upregulating two protective pathways and downregulating inflammation all happening at the cellular level. Now, what makes Abmacol different from other supplements? Yeah, so as shared, it has both the glucoraphanin and that active marasinase enzyme. And the nice thing is we do over 80 quality checks. We're really proud of our quality team that we have both in our Maryland and, and um, South Carolina facilities. We do over 80 quality checks from the raw materials to the finished goods. The most important thing, after we uh, create our, our lots of product, we test to make sure that marasinase is still active. It's a protein. And remember I said with heat, our proteins can denature and not work anymore. We have to make sure during production that we don't have too much heat in the production process. So we always verify with each slot that we have glucoraphanin and then active marasinase. Without that, you're not going to be able to convert to sulforaphane. It's in the tablet. And again, it's um, backed by, by more than 15 human clinical studies. And so what positive effects does Abmacol have for people with autism? Yeah, so um, it's a great question. And the first thing, you know, I didn't share yet. So I had a, a brother, unfortunately he passed, who had Down syndrome. And, and what I like to say about um, autism, you know, for me as a scientist, really, it's a collection of phenotypes. And these are things we see as a parent or as a brother or sister. And so what it does is it helps to tame some of these phenotypes. And so what we see, and we have five clinical studies and we have um, one that was completed at University of California, San Francisco and published in 2018. We have one that was completed at University of North Carolina, one at UMass, one at Rutgers, and then a large multi-center um, study that was uh, carried out in China, collectively over 400 participants. And these are all randomized placebo 
controlled studies. And what we see is an increase in focus, an increase in task completion, um, emotional regulation. So decreasing aggressive behaviors, uh, repetitive stimming behaviors are tamed. And we also see an increase in speech. And that's the most dramatic one. So, and again, we find it's about 70% positive. And, and we have five different studies. People often ask, why are there five different studies on ASD? Each one looks at a, a different age range or some are just boys, some are boys and girls. Um, we look at different things from clinical outcomes to biomarkers as well. We actually have a lot of our studies are taking blood and urine samples and looking at the changes in these protective enzymes and inflammatory markers. So now you talked about the studies. Um, is that the clinical research that you're talking about? Um, and how do we find that? Like, how is it, what's backing that up? Yeah, that's correct. So we have those five human clinical studies and I tell everybody, um, and this goes for, for supplements and dietary supplements in general. Um, you know, when I went from medical school to a, a dietary supplement nutraceutical company, people always ask, how do you know like which supplements to take? You go into an aisle and you're like kind of lost. And, and the one thing I always say is call up the company as if they've done any type of research in vitro research, and we have that as well. In the laboratory, we have the Translational Research Laboratory in Maryland, where we look at how our actives and finished products um, kind of uh, affect these molecular pathways in a positive way. We also do some animal studies, and then we have the human clinical trials. So always call the company and ask if they're supporting research for those products. I always say, how can you take a dietary supplement if there's no clinical trial? You don't know if it's safe, and you don't know the dosing. How's that dosing or recommended um, you know, daily usage? How's that even derived if it hasn't been part of a study? Our Abmacol line of products are backed by studies. The Abmacol product itself is backed by five ASD studies, and those are the clinical studies. If you want to learn about them, you can go into clinicaltrials.gov. So clinicaltrials.gov, it's a website that's freely available, and there's a search area, and you can just put in Abmacol or broccoli, and you'll actually see all of the studies that have been undertaken using our product. Now, what is on the horizon for the ASD community um, and when it comes to research um, and as it relates to Abmacol and, and beyond that? Yeah, absolutely. So we have those five initial clinical trials. Unfortunately, the one at Rutgers is on hold because of COVID. So hopefully that changes really quick. And that's the last one where they're still accruing patients. They're more than 70% accrued, which means they've, they've accumulated or, or they have enough participants. They have about 30% more to, to have entered the study so that it finishes. But after that study is done, we have now follow-up studies. And we're going to actually be looking at our, our, our other product, which is Amical Extra Strength, where we have the Mataki beta-glucans. And those have been shown in our laboratory sets in in vitro research, those have been shown to help increase phase two detoxifying enzymes even more so. So there's a synergistic effect. And it also helps um, modulate the inflammation as well as modulate our immune system. And so that's actually gonna be the next set of studies. And we're gonna be looking at that product in some of the kids and seeing um, specifically looking at these functional MRIs and how the speech attainment is, um, is happening um, more so at the molecular level. So that's gonna be using our Abmacol Extra Strength because that'll be our sixth ASD uh, study. Wow. And so you're talking about that in a particular way to help maintain the health and wellness. Um, can it also help the ASD caregivers as well? Yeah, absolutely. And I learned so much from my parents when they took care of my, my brother, Jonathan, you know, as a caregiver, you have to be like on your game, so to speak, you know, to use that term. And so the last thing you want to do is get run down and you yourself get sick from all the just emotional roller coasters and stress, right, from having to um, you know, take, take care of a, you know, a son or a daughter or a loved one. Um, and so um, our Abmacol Extra Strength, what I love about it is with that immune support, it actually helps to um, promote your immune health overall. And in times of, you know, stress where, you know, our immune system can get crippled, it actually helps to, to give us some support that's much needed, especially during now the cold and flu season and with COVID and everybody traveling. And I'm not sure what people's plans are going to be for Thanksgiving, but I bet still a lot of people are going to have, you know, get together with family and friends, maybe outside, you know, maybe a smaller crowd, but you still always have to, I go on the assumption that somebody's always a little bit sick at some of those gatherings. So having a little bit of good immune support um, never hurts. And that's what the Abmacoxia strength allows for. That's wonderful. I feel like I have learned so much. Um, and, you know, who knew, right? Like, I feel like this is something we've kind of heard a little bit about the last couple of years, at least in the autism community. But you know, no one's really explained it in this detail. So for me, it's really exciting. I know with my son, we're on this product and, you know, I'm very, very hopeful and I'm seeing great things. And we talked about it before the interview. And so I highly recommend everyone watching this, you know, definitely go to their website, learn more, you know, they're a company that cares, they're a company that's doing just amazing work and, and helping so many of us in the autism community, not only our children, but the parents and caregivers as well. So thank you so much, Brian, for being here today. 
No, thanks for having me. And I, I really enjoy your kind of mantra of instilling hope in everybody. And I think that's, um, you know, if we could do that to everybody listening today, I mean, that'll, you know, kind of uh, touch my heart. And I, and I just hope that, you know, everybody um, has a great upcoming holiday season, Christmas and Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate and Thanksgiving and, um, you know, just stay healthy and, um, you know, keep on fighting, uh, you know, the, the road to recovery, it's sometimes tough, but it's out there. And I know everybody will, will find it. And just uh, thanks again for having me and um, you stay well. Absolutely. Thank you, Brian. And thank you for everyone that's watching. And remember, hope is our middle name here at the Autism Hope Alliance. Until next time. Bye, guys.